I am Linda. And I'm Sarah. Are you ready? Oh yeah, I'm ready. Let's Get Relational! Hi, welcome to another episode of Let's Get Relational. Today we're going to talk about what you really want. Not what society expects from you, not what your family expects of you, not what your children expect of you, your coworkers, your boss. What do you really want? Yeah, and that like that's such a really good question to ask ourselves because we get so caught up in everyone else's stuff all the time. And it's like and it's not even like you know what they're telling us to do, it's what we expect them to tell us to do and so we're doing it based on all of these assumptions that we're making. And so it's just, we, we work ourselves into a frenzy trying to meet everyone else's expectations, both known and unknown. Exactly. I think that's one of the things I, I didn't realize that I had carried into adulthood expectations that were maybe no longer expected of me. You know, mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. things that were an expectation of my family growing up, there were certainly were things that were expectations for me. But I realized that I brought that into my adult relationships and assumed that people expected certain things of me. And I didn't even question what I wanted. I questioned not very much, honestly. I just went along this path. I knew I was supposed to go to college. I knew I was going to go to graduate school. I knew I was going to do X, Y, and Z. And when I veered from those paths, you know, sometimes bad things happened and sometimes really great things happened, like things that were totally unexpected. Yeah. But it, it took me till I was way older than you to really start looking at what do I really want and how do I make decisions for me? And by that time, I also had responsibility for you. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't make decisions that didn't include you for me. I know there are parents who do that. They decide they're not going to be in their child's life. That, that was certainly not an option for me. So it was, it was okay, how do I continue being a, a good parent for you and figure out what it is that I want in my life? And so I started doing other things that I often wondered about. I took sailing lessons, I went on trips by myself, and just really explored what the options were of, of how to figure out what I wanted. Because I honestly didn't even know how to figure yeah. out what I wanted. Yeah, because part of like, Figuring out what you want is also related to like who you want to be. And I'm, I have a very nerdy comparison right now. There's this cartoon show that I really fell in love with and me and a bunch of friends fell in love with. But um, one, of the, one of the characters um, never changes like an outfit, but every single one of the other characters changes an outfit through the five seasons of the series. And this, the main character never does because she never figures out who she is. Wow. She, that, that, was, that was the thing that the creators of the show were like, no, we're going to make everyone else go through a change, mature, figure out who they really more closer and closer to who they want to be and like go through like a whole outfit change. This character never does because of the fact that she never figures out in the show that she may like be on that. But in the show itself, she never figured out who she was because she was basing it off of all of uh, everyone else's expectations of who she was supposed to be. And so that was like, wow, you, you may not have caught that while watching the show, but after like reflecting on that, it's like, wow, you can go through saving the entire galaxy because that's what she does, but still not know who she is. So yeah, cause that was a, a role that was yeah. laid out for her and an expectation. So I, what I would invite you to do is like really this week, take a little time to just write down the top 10 things you really love, whether it's people, uh, experiences, things, what do you really love? What do you know that you love? Um, and what do you know that you want? That, that was a big one for me is knowing what I wanted. I, um, I wrote about this in a blog post too. I remember right before my uh, 50th birthday, and 50 was very significant because my maternal grandparents were dead by 50 and my mom had her disabling heart attack at 50. And so turning 50 for me was pretty scary. And I was in this uh, breakout group at this training and all of these men as part of the training asked me what I really wanted. What do I like to do and, and what do I want? And I had no idea. Uh, well, and they looked at me like I was nuts because they all had like a long list of things that they really liked. And I said, well, I know I like 
going to acupuncture. I thought, great, the only thing I know I like is I'm going to get needles stuck in me. Um, but it was an hour with this very gifted healer who was a chiropractor and an acupuncturist, and um, it was all about me. And I realized how little of my life had become about me. Mm -hmm. And my life was all about making sure other people were taken care of. My life was all about making sure that uh, my business was handled. And I didn't really know what I really liked to do anymore. And I had really lost that. So that's one of the things as, as we've been doing this work together is checking in about what we really like, what we really want, uh, and allowing each of us to grow separately. And yeah. we've grown together uh, yeah. as part of that. But a lot of it has been for each of us, like looking at what, what do we say we want? Yeah. And what are we, what are we backing that up with, with action? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I feel like so often we'll, we'll go and be like, you know, let's say you're going through the supermarket of dreams. Um, that's in quotes here. Um, <laughs> just random, but like a supermarket of dreams where you're perusing, you're taking a look at things or whatever. And maybe you see something that catches your eye and you're like, Ooh, I want it. But you make no effort to go steer your cart towards it and pick it up and put it in your cart and like go to the checkout to like take it home with you. Like you have to, once you make the decision that the dream is something that you want to achieve, you have to do the things to get the achievement. You know, you can't just not do that. Um, it's like, uh, uh, I'm not gonna, video game comparison. There's like, there, you can earn trophies and achievements in games, but you have to do the things to get right. those trophies. Like, it's the same thing in life. You have to complete the challenges. You have to jump through the hoops to get to the, your dream. Like, there's, there's no way of just like taking a magic potion and teleporting to it and being like, yeah, I did it. I made it all the way. Woo. But while not putting forth any of the work. So, and work doesn't have to be hard. No, I, I think sometimes we don't allow ourselves to want things because we think it's going to be too hard to get it. We get all caught up in the how. Well, yeah. I want that, but I don't know how it's going to happen. So I'm not going to even think about it. Exactly. And it's like, you just slowly shut down and become smaller and smaller. So you fit in the little, little, I don't know, a little thimble of who you could possibly be. And I think that the, the thing for me is that you, we stop allowing ourselves to dream. Yeah, like we, and I just thought of, of, you know, like, I think I lost, I kind of lost my train of thought on that, but it was, it was basically along the, along the lines of like, um, it, it's going after things becomes like scary because, you know, oh, it's like, well, what, what use is it? What use is the dream? That's what it was. It was when you come up with a dream and you're like, oh, that sounds interesting, but like, what would I do with it? Like, it's like you're searching for a meaning for it. Like, how is this supposed to better my life? How is this supposed to better other people? Like, you're thinking about how does this fit in? How am I gonna find the time to do all of this? And and I think that that can kind of, that's kind of a problem. I think that a lot of people are facing is that they're, they, they have a dream, but they're like, oh, but what's the point of pursuing this? Because it doesn't, you know, give me money or do all of these other things that it, Things are expected of. Did that make any sense? Kind of. <laughs> I think I'm tracking. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Uh. Let me rephrase it, because um. Basically, where you you have a dream, you think you have a dream, and you sit there and start to consider, well, what use is pursuing that dream? What is that dream gonna do for me? You're not thinking of in terms of it making you happy. You're thinking of terms of how is this going to, um, you know, provide something for me in my life, usually related to materialistic, like money or something. And um, that actually happens a lot in the art community where a lot of people are pushing artists to, if they uh, make really great art, like, oh, do you do commissions? Like, oh, you should sell your stuff. And some people are like, no, I don't want to because then it's become a job and then I'm not gonna love my job anymore. But there's, there's this idea that you have to love what you do in the same way that you love like your hobbies, but that's not necessarily, the, doesn't have to be the same thing. So I think we can sometimes get confused with dreaming up something and wanting it to be a hobby versus it becoming a job. So. Yeah, and, and being able to uh, articulate that. So if I like to make art just for art's sake and other people don't like it, um, then I, I'm kind of out of uh, luck if I've decided that that's how I'm gonna earn my living. 
Yeah. But if I create art for art's sake, because I love the creation of it, and it doesn't matter to me if anybody else cares about it, because yeah. it's my creation, then I think I'm, I'm much happier, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm not trying to turn myself into a pretzel to please other people. So I think we get things all mixed up sometimes and, and to really take some time to just focus on what do I like to do? Who do I like to be around? What do I really want in my life? You know, if I really am tired of working and I want to retire, how can I make that work? And it's like, you don't have to do anything, but allow yourself to dream about it so that you can say, oh, uh, I, I always say to my clients, um, try this jacket on. <clears throat> I had a client once who was thinking of leaving her, her uh, husband. I said, well, try the jacket on of leaving him. And um, what would your days be like? What would your weeks be like? How would it be with your kids and your grandkids? What would that jacket feel like? And she came back the next session and she said, I didn't like that jacket. It didn't fit. There's a lot of things my husband is not, but I'm going to stay married to him. Uh, and I'm going to get my needs met that he can't meet other places. And I'm just going to appreciate who he is for who he is. And so for me, I've been doing that same thing mm -hmm. all along. It's like I'm always trying on the jacket of, you know, do I love where I live? Do I want to live somewhere else? And I allow myself to dream without getting caught up in the how. I think that is the most important thing is that we, we get caught up in, well, how am I going to make that happen? Yeah. And so we, we crush all of those dreams. And so just allowing yourself to open up and imagine what you really, really want. And, and then if it's really what you want, a path will be shown to you. And yeah. sometimes you do require having some help, you know, some people to coach you along the way to get there. Uh, but if you don't dream, you, you just shrivel. Yeah, and I think part of the not dreaming, I think, can be related to the, the weird consensus that we've come to that life is really difficult. Yeah. And that because life is so difficult, trying to do anything that you're not currently doing is going to be even more difficult and it adds so much more to your plate and it's just gonna like stress you out even more. So, but it, but the thing is, that's only gonna happen if you think that's gonna happen. If you believe that to be uh, how life is. So if you are constantly thinking that, oh, life is never easy, life is really difficult, um, everything is hard, everything's gonna be difficult and hard for you. You're, nothing's gonna come easily to you, but if you kind of let yourself open up a little and relax a bit and sort of, you know, realize that yes, life is a roller coaster and there are scary parts, but there are also fun parts. And if you're not into roller coasters, there, you, what other things that are fun, there's, you know, something, something like that, where it's just, you're not, um, you don't, you, maybe you can like you, with a roller coaster, you can see what's coming sometimes, but you're not know, you don't know how it's going to feel like from the ground, you can look at it, but you're not know how, you don't know how it's going to feel when you're actually in the roller coaster itself. I feel like that's what life is more like where you can sort of see the big picture, but it's like, you don't really know what you're going to be feeling at any given moment because things can change. Um, so, but it doesn't have to be difficult. It's, it's like your, it's your mindset is what makes it difficult. You can make things more difficult for yourself. I, I do that a lot. <laughs> I, I do that a lot for myself. I, I can get frustrated really easily. And then my frustration makes it more difficult for me. And she'll remind me just, be, and she'll tell me, take a breath, take a little break and then come back to it. And sometimes I don't want to, and I just want to stew a little bit, but sometimes, <laughs> but most of the time, Really, I'll listen to her and I'll go take a break and I'll do something else or I'll go get a drag and drink from Starbucks. Um, <laughs> and I'll come back and I'll feel better. So when I'm not feeling frustrated and feeling like everything's working against me, then it's like, oh, wait, the answer's there. Yeah, when you get up all in your head and, and just get frustrated and you, you, that frustration, that energy you bring to it really doesn't help you find the solution. Mm -mm. And, and so I think a lot of us have... Um, try to create a life that doesn't have too much conflict mm -hmm. and doesn't have too much uh, pain. And so what I, I've learned over the years is that when we try to like keep everything at a, a kind of a low level of frequency, that we don't get to experience those like amazingly high points of joy and uh, exaltation. I mean, just like, yes, life is so great. Yeah. Uh, because we we're so busy trying to keep everything on an even keel. And um, that's just not the only way there is to live, live life. And you, you can do that, that but, but make sure that's what you really want. 
you know, really check in with yourself. Like, try that jacket on and well, what if I didn't have to be always at this even queue? What if I could make a mistake sometimes? What if I could be the one in the group that gets angry? What if I could be the one that says something that, that isn't sensitive? You know, what would that be like? You know, and, and how do I allow myself to be more me and not uh, feel like I am doing what other people are expecting of me? Yeah. Unless it's really what I want to be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, people expect certain things of me, but they're things I like. Yeah. And, I, you know, they expect me to show up if I say I'm going to show up. They expect me to um, be honest. They expect mm -hmm. me to be upbeat most of the time. And those are all things that I don't do because I should. Those are me. And that's, yeah. that's what I like. Yeah. If it's, if you, it's something that you like to do and you enjoy doing, then, okay, sure. If people expect you to do it, that's fine. You can meet those expectations. No problem. But, there are, but you know, there's also um, times that you maybe can't meet those and being able to communicate that is like the important thing and for your people to understand you know you can't be a hundred and ten percent happy all of the time you know it's not like that's a 24 7 thing we have our bad days too um, <laughs> so and and our moments where you know we can't really be happy for uh, one reason or another so it's also just like an understanding that sure you can meet most of those expectations you can meet those expectations most of the time but there are some times where it's just like you're human you're not you're not gonna be able to keep that up 110 percent of the time well and I don't live my life in order to meet those expectations uh, what yeah. I really sought to do especially in this uh, last few years of my life is really stay in the present moment mm -hmm. and acknowledge what I'm feeling acknowledge what I'm thinking and uh, be willing to feel whatever I'm feeling. And so I, there was a time in my life when I, uh, in fact, most of my, my life, I would um, try to figure out what might happen. And so I could plan for every possible thing. And so I was never living in the present moment. I was always concerned about, well, what's next? And I still have some of that that is in me. And mostly what I'm trying to do at this point in my life is just really settle into um, being present in the moment, not worrying about the future, because I can't control a lot of it, but my actions in this present moment do speak to what the outcome is gonna be. And so I don't wanna have in this present moment a lot of anxiety and fear, because uh, I feel like what we think about, you're, you're bringing about. And it's yeah. like, that's, I, I, you know, I don't mean that in some, you know, out there uh, manifestation kind of thing. But it's like, if I assume I'm going to have a really great outcome of something, I often do. If, yeah. I, if I feel like it's going to be pain and struggle, it often is. Yeah, like basically what you expect of your reality is, going, is what reality is going to give you. And like if you commit to that aspect, like if you commit to that, like, it, oh... Okay, so you're thinking it's going to be hard, and you're like, yeah, it's going to be really hard, and you just keep, you're, you're committed to the fact that it's going to be hard, well, guess what? Reality is going to di uh, deliver difficulties for you. That That's just how it's going to go, because that's what you're attracting. That's the kind of energy you're putting out. That's what you're constantly thinking about. When you're constantly focused on one thing being one way, and you're driving all of your energy towards it being that one way, that's what you're going to get, because you're not leaving yourself open for any other option. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> wrapping it up, I suggest that this week you spend a little bit of time just writing down all the things you love about your life right now. I mean love. And put a little asterisk beside, besides the ones that you consciously chose to create. Like, I chose this home to create. Mm -hmm. I chose this business to have with my daughter. There are a lot of things I chose. Um, I didn't choose to live in an area where we have lots of problems with, with uh, fires and smoke in the air and things like that. I didn't choose that consciously, but it is what I have now. So that's another thing I'm always looking at. Am I continuing to want to choose this? Now, times like this of the year, it is so gorgeous here. Temperature's perfect, blue yeah. sky. I can't imagine Green. living anywhere else. Green, and yeah. gold. Yeah, and, and so I consciously choose in this moment to stay in this moment and I will know when it's no longer the right place for me. Yeah. And, and so that's the place where I don't spend a lot of time like online researching where else could I live, that kind of thing. I know that when it's the right time, I'm going to know. The, the last time I was renting, a, 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 I was living on a houseboat 
and I knew it was time to leave. I didn't have a place to go. I didn't have a place to, um, that I was going to go, but I gave my notice because I was required to give 60 days notice. And I thought, well, I'm just going to turn it over and like look at what would be really lovely to bring into my life and trust that it's going to happen and trust that the timing will be perfect. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. So make a list. What are the things that you're choosing um, that you love? And what things are you doing because it's just a role you've taken on? You know, and, and what are you saying that you want, but you're taking no action step toward? I think that's one of the things that you were talking about earlier is like uh, choosing that you wanted. You've always said you're an author and yeah. want to be a published author. Yeah, I wrote a blog post this week about yeah. that of just I for uh, over a decade, basically, um, I've said I wanted to be an author and I've said I want to write and I've done so much writing in those 10 years. Like I have a stack that's probably like five inches tall of like all of the manuscripts that I've like written and printed out and handed out to people and gotten feedback on um, throughout my entire college career. Um, so it, there's so much paper. Um, but you know, I, I went to college to write, you know, I went to, to college to deepen my writing, to understand the human mind better, the human, uh, human emotions better, to be able to portray them in a character better, how to write a journey, um, instead of just like a story. Right. Um, and, but you know, I'm three years out of college and I still haven't written a book yet. Well, so, you, you've written some books, but you did, they weren't up to your standards. No, they were kind of poo. Yeah. They were pretty poopy. Uh, <laughs> but you but, did it. And so, but one of the things that you were uh, sharing with me was you had made a decision during the pandemic. Yeah. That I was in the context. I'm creating context. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, like three years out of, out of college, like I haven't completed a book that I love. Yes. There we go. There I haven't completed, completed a rough draft of a book that I love. And I've been working on one for three years now. Um, and so I, during this pandemic, like everything just went uh, kapooey in, in normal routines and all of that good stuff. Uh, so it, it was just dealing with a global crisis meant I got into habits and routines that didn't incorporate writing into my life. And so I was... Uh, as I said in the blog post, it was in my bathroom. I don't know why, um, but you know, standing, standing in my bathroom and just realization of like, oh, if I keep doing this, I will not reach my dream. Like, and that was just like a heart stopping moment of, oh God, I don't want to lose this dream. That's something that I still want. And so then I like immediately went and replanned my every routine that I had and what I normally do and be like, okay, this is what I have to do. I need to write every day now. And how do I fit that in? Because I need to do it. Because the thing is I could have done it, you know, for the last 10 months last year, but I just didn't quite have the capacity for it. Cause you need a lot of brain juice to write creatively and make the words flow all pretty and stuff like that. Um, but I, I had, I had consciously make that decision though. I had to go from unconsciously doing whatever I was doing to like, wait a second. No, I need to choose every day, every day to write or else it wasn't going to happen. So yeah, that's my decision. Yeah. So take a look at the things that you really think you want and decide if they're worth pursuing. Decide, mm -hmm. make a choice. Uh, I'm going to put that dream on the, on the, on the shelf for now. I, it's important to me, but I'm not going to put energy toward it right now because it's not as important as these other things and really get down to the, just the few things that you really know you want and you want to figure out how to make happen. I, I know so many people who put off traveling or they put off, uh, starting a family or they put off, uh, really doing the career that they really want to have, uh, for so many reasons and fear is often the number one, but Take some time to acknowledge what you really want and allow yourself to dream about it and allow yourself to take a step toward it Yeah. and, and uh, create a plan to, to make it happen. Yeah. All right. And until next time, we love you. Mm -hmm. Mwah.